Good morning, I'm Trish Pahanik and this is Synopsis, your first early morning briefing. Today is Friday the 3rd of July, 2009. Here are today's top stories. Discovery Channel explores the vast Pacific Ocean in a new six-part special, Wild Pacific, opening July 12th at 8 p.m., beginning with the first three episodes. The second three episodes will air on July 13th, starting at 8 p.m. Narrated by Mike Rowe and produced by the BBC, Wild Pacific will chart the formation of 10,000 Pacific islands, lagoons, and reefs from steady volcanic eruptions, as well as the animals, fish, and people who live, adapt, and survive in this environment. ABC Family is back with new episodes of 10 Things I Hate About You, featuring the adventures of the Stratford sisters played by Lindsay Shaw and Megan Martin starting July 28th at 8 p.m., Carter Covington serves as the series' executive producer. MSG debuted its new original series, EBC, live at Rucker Park last night at 7 p.m. The half-hour series, hosted by Michael Bivens, profiles the EBC tournament players, announcers, spotlights the celebrities attending, plus stories about the famous streetball tourney. Television is a more effective platform for commercials than the internet or mobile devices, so says a new research study initiated by the Cable and Telecommunications Association for Marketing and the research company NeuroFocus cites Adweek. TV ranked high in the areas of emotional engagement, commercial recall, and intent to purchase, while viewers find advertising on mobile devices and online to be less engaging. BBC America debuts the Season 4 U.S. premiere of You Are What You Eat, July 7th at 8 p.m. Dr. Gillian McKeith returns as the tough diet coach and detective traveling the U.K. to find weight loss cases needing her help the most. During this new season, Dr. McKeith will even invite patients to move into her house so they can follow her rules to the T and will even move in with them if they regress. Jewish Life Television made a distribution deal with DirecTV that began June 24th. Jewish Life Television, offering Jewish-themed programming 24-7, is now available to DirecTV customers who have multi-satellite equipment. 44 Blue Productions captures new footage inside infamous prison throughout the world for its most recent edition of prison series Lock Up World Tour, airing on MSNBC. 44 Blue Productions began the series back in 2000, shooting maximum security prisons across America, then added the versions Lock Up, Extended Stay, and Lock Up Raw. Rasha Drakovic serves as the series executive producer for 44 Blue Productions, and Elise Warner is executive producer for MSNBC. ABC is moving forward on the development phase of a new reality competition series, The Fast and the Funniest, described as a cross between Last Comic Standing and The Amazing Race. Paige Hurwitz and Javier Winnick from Last Comic Standing are behind the project, as is Keep Calm Productions. The series will follow a group of stand-up comedians as they compete in challenges and performances around the country, and the first three to reach the last city will do a comedy face-off for a cash prize. ABC's order is cash contingent and if approved would join the network's lineup in late mid-season or next summer. And last up today, Christian Slater, last seen on TV in NBC's cancelled series, My Own Worst Enemy, is in talks to headline ABC's new series, The Forgotten, from Warner Brothers TV and Jerry Bruckheimer. Slater would replace UK actor Rupert Penry Jones, who starred in the pilot episode in this mystery drama about a team of amateur detectives led by an ex-cop, played by Slater, whose young daughter was kidnapped three years prior. The series is also currently recasting the female member of the detective band. The Forgotten is scheduled to premiere on ABC September 22nd at 10 p.m. Hi, I'm John Cox and this week I have a question for you. What if we didn't read all the stories about Michael Jackson? Does the knowledge of his will, the real color of his hair, whether or not he was the real legal father of those children, does this knowledge make us better people? Does this knowledge allow us to understand Mr. Jackson any better? In time, I might have interest in reading about his tortured life, but this day-to-day feeding frenzy that has produced more false information than fact, this TMZ mania, what possible purpose can it serve? What needs to be remembered is that Mr. Jackson was an extraordinary talent who was convicted of nothing except for weirdness. So what if we didn't read all those stories about Michael Jackson? Well, 
Maybe we become better people. Maybe we remember Mr. Jackson for his achievements rather than his missteps. And maybe, finally, Michael Jackson can rest in peace. I'm John Cox, and that's just my opinion. Have a great holiday. And on that note, that's a wrap. Be sure to check your email for today's emailed edition of Synopsis with new executive moves, more on ratings, some new classified ads, and a few other bits and pieces that are not included in this podcast, and of course tonight's primetime broadcast lineup. This is a Synopsis Media production in association with 311 West. For Cynthia Turner, who wrote and compiled Synopsis in Saratoga, New York, I'm Trish Pahonic. I'm going to have a good day. If I make it myself, I'm gonna have a good day. I don't need no one else. I'm gonna have a good day. Nothing wrong I could do. I'm gonna have a good day. Hope you have a good day too.